Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's celestial sphere discussion, we will be looking at the meridian and find out what that means in the sky. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what is the meridian? Well, essentially, it is an imaginary line that passes through a couple of different points. And that would be passing through the observer's zenith, as well as the north and south pole points on the horizon, and will also pass through the celestial poles. So it'll pass through all of that. And it is a great circle on the sky, which divides the sky into two. Now the meridian is actually specific to your location. So what the meridian is for one location on Earth or an object crossing the meridian will be very different for a person on another part of the Earth. So if you are farther east or west of somebody, you won't see the exact same object on the meridian. Now you can think about that in terms of the sun. So what is the position of the sun in the sky? Well, the sun at local noon will be on the meridian. What do we mean by local noon? Well, local noon is when the sun crosses the meridian. That is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. Now, it may not be exactly at noon, depending on your location. It could be a little before that or a little bit of after that, because we have standard time zones and we don't use local time, but we use a standard time to be able to determine times in a various area. But not just for the sun, but any object will actually reach its highest point in the sky when it crosses the meridian. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. We have the north point over here and the south point over here. So those are north and south. The zenith is up overhead and that is going to be so this orange dotted line would be the meridian. So an object would then rise, say, in the east and would slowly get higher and higher in the sky as it crosses the meridian. It kind of peaks and then it would go down and set in the west. Now, it's a little different, difficult to see with this perspective here, but that would then show that this is the highest point any object will reach in the sky. And that depends on exactly where it rises and where it sets that will give us that. So as we've looked at, every object is going to do a couple of things. It is going to rise in the east. Then it will cross that meridian when it reaches its highest point and finally set in the west. And to clarify, rising in the east and setting in the west means those general directions. Objects don't rise exactly east or set exactly west. They may be north or south of those locations. But the object is actually due south as it crosses the meridian. So let's finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at so far is what is the meridian? Well, it is the line that passes through the observer's zenith, as well as the north and south points on the horizon. Every object is going to cross the meridian as part of its daily motion. And that occurs when the object is highest in the sky and due south. So that concludes this discussion on the celestial sphere and the meridian. We'll be back again next week to talk about another part of the celestial sphere. So until then, have a great day, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.